thank you for joining us um, for our intro to Milo webinar. Um, the first things that we want to start out with today will be um, introducing you to the system itself, um, and then we'll hold questions for afterwards. Um, if you do have questions during this, please do submit them um, through the, the chat or question windows. Um, but it would be nice to get through the beginning portion um, and hold those questions if you can till the end. So the My League Online system, um, I, am, I have here displaying the front page. This is the home page for the entirety of the Milo system. We have our list of live Milo sites um, from across the nation. And so you can visit our home page to check out any of those live sites to get an idea of um, who is currently on Milo. Uh, one of the first uh, chunks of the system that I wanted to jump into is the uh, support aspect of Milo. We have quite a few um, ways or resources that are available to you. The first being the documentation um, portal, if you will. Uh, this is linked from the Milo homepage, and this documentation portal will hold a lot of the written documentation that is available to um, all webmasters. So we also have additional help that is linked here. Um, we have the glossary, which is another uh, written uh, resource within the Milo system. Um, but outside of that, we have a Milo support Google group. Um, I have the window open here. And this Milo support Google group is not only, um, it, it not only in, includes the Milo team as admins, but we have all webmasters, um, we encourage all webmasters to join that, that group so that you not only have the Milo team as a resource, but you have all the webmasters across the country um, as well. We also have, YouTube videos. Uh, these videos are a bit older than our the current look of our system, but they do um, go over the same functions uh, that that are supported uh, today. And then aside from that, there is a link to another uh, portal for written documentation. So it's just another um, resource on top of this this uh, default Milo documentation page. We also um, have phone support um, as far as during our business hours, Monday, Monday through Friday, with the exception of Thursdays, um, we do have myself uh, available um, on the phones from 9 to 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So I'm available here to answer any questions or troubleshoot anything that um, you're, you're having any, any problems with. Um, from there, now let's jump into um, a Milo site itself. So I have here a sample basic site. Um, just so that we can get an idea of the uh, functions that are available to you as a webmaster. Um, let's start with the uh, anatomy of a basic site here. This sample basic site is currently using the red and blue theme. Um, we have the red and blue theme as our default, but with National last year revamping their website, lwv.org, they came out with those new branding standards. So we, in conjunction with those branding standards, created a new purple and gold theme. So there are three designs that are available to all leagues on Milo. This red and blue theme with the left-hand side menu is the first. The second, this is the purple and gold theme utilizing the same menu. Um, but you'll see that the theme and the color scheme are different. And then the last uh, option as far as design goes is the purple and gold theme with a top 
navigational menu. And that, um, that is something that you can discuss with the Milo team if you're interested in any one of these design changes. So let's jump back to this sample basic Milo site. Okay, so with this red and blue theme site, um, there are two major places where a webmaster will access to capture all of the functions that are available to you. Essentially, those are the two places that you will um, access to be able to manage all that is uh, available to you to manage. The first is the home page, also known as the landing, the league's landing page, or also known as the front page. This is this entire thing is the front page, the home page. Um, and to be able to access the editing functions of the home page, you would click and start a new draft. So why don't we get into that? Because it's not only the home page body content, it's not just the text box that you see under the slideshow. There are quite a few other things that are manageable through the home page. So we see the title first is the title of the league. This title actually fills in the league's logo at the top. So um, any changes that are made here not only affect the league logo, um, but they do also affect the URL. And I apologize, I am going to be jumping back and forth from the editing form of the Sample Basic Sites homepage and jumping back to the public version or the live version um, of that so that we can, I can point out where those portions are displaying. Okay, so back here, um, like I was saying, that title controls the logo, but it also controls the uh, league's URL. So Sample Basic Site fills in the last portion uh, based off the title. The home page body content is um, pretty straightforward. And what is great about Milo is that um, this WYSIWYG text editor is the default. And that stands for what you see is what you get. Um, that is by default what your uh, text box will always be set to. And that allows you to have a formatting toolbar, which is very much like uh, working with Microsoft Word. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown of the major parts of this formatting toolbar. Um, let's play around with some of, this, some of this text so that you can see some of the examples of the formatting available to you. So I'm just pasting in another um, version of that paragraph. So here are the first drop down that is available to you it are the different headings um, to be formatted. I'll, I'll leave um, a couple of these and let's see, this one is heading three, we have heading four now. Let's set a heading two, just so that we can see an example of all of these at work. And this one here is set to paragraph. All right, and then the last one there, the, the dif biggest difference, these two are very similar, DIV um, and paragraph, the biggest difference there is that paragraph is comparable to um, text that has maybe two points of spacing and DIV is uh, single spaced text. From there, we have the styles drop down. Um, these are really cool because they're not only for text, you can also apply some of these styles to images that you bring into your um, text box. So let's apply a few of these. Um, our page is gonna look real crazy, but that's totally fine. We just want to take a look at um, some of these examples. So this special one gives you a serif font. Um, we do have this notice already down here. Um, it, outlines your text in that yellow box. The button uh, formatting gives you a, a little bit of action there um, because once you hover over that, the 
color does change a bit for that button. And uh, let's go ahead with write justify. Write justify and float image write are very comparable as well as left justify and float image write. Um, so let's take a look at uh, those formatting examples once we um, save these changes. So we'll keep going to, to keep uh, going through what is available to you on the home page. Under that body text box is um, there are two types of additional text boxes that are available to you. The first is this third party embed code. And I'm gonna add one here so that we can um, play around with that. So this is instruction that's given to me, paste your embed code here. An example of something that would go here would be um, like a PayPal button for, for your donate page or um, the vote 411 widget um, that we just recently, um, or that we have through uh, vote411.org, that's an embed code that could be placed here. And because it's an embed code, would be left to full HTML so that that widget would display properly. Um, let's add the second type, which is an additional formatted text box. And this formatted text box, say that you do have some embed code here, because you've added this additional text box, it's going to display in that order. Uh, the, the additional formatted text box is displaying under your widget or PayPal button, whatever it is you placed in that first box. But because you have these grabby handles, you have a chance to rearrange. Um, and the asterisk remains there uh, until you save all of your changes to the page. So because I don't have anything here, I'm going to remove these um, and it just takes uh, a second piece of confirmation to ensure that they are deleted. Okay, so now we have these collapsible fields um, and let's go through each one of them. Callouts for the top of the page and areas served. This is very much like uh, League Easy Web. Your current Lou site uh, does have um, the area served listed on the home page, um, essentially under the header. And then in all of the other internal pages, uh, your league has chosen um, a phrase or our, usually our mission statement, make democracy work, um, something like that along those lines. So we ask for the same information. Uh, let me jump back out to the front um, view, the public view of the sample basic site. Um, we have empowering voters, defending democracy. Um, and actually, this is just uh, showing you that um, this note is indeed correct. If you are not seeing your customizations here, contact us um, because it just means that we do have to take an extra step there um, because this text serving the League of Women Voters should be on the home page, but we are seeing the internal um, call out here. So that's just a, a, um, a note to the ever changing and dynamic nature of Milo. Um, we are constantly improving it and making changes. So um, if there is ever anything like this where um, it, there is something not working as expected, we we are going to make sure that we're in communication with you to make sure you, you have the um, access to resolve that. So, um, that is uh, what our callouts are about. And now let's jump down to league contact information. All of this league uh, info, as far as contact info, will display in the footer. So here again is, is the name, that's that title. Um, I only have the city, state, and zip uh, entered in for this league's address, um, but that's just the minimum required. Uh, entries. So one cool thing about the contact information, say that you make a change to your address. 
you can click to read geocode um, because the address can be will be clickable um, to be accessed as far as um, bringing up a map goes. Um, so you can read geocode so that the system knows I've made an uh, an update to that um, address and. Uh, you're prompting the system to, to know that as well. Underneath the, um, well, within the lead contact information in that same um, collapsed field are the social links for the footer. And let me jump back out to the public side. So I have Facebook and Twitter for this site, for this league. Um, and so only those two buttons display. Let me jump back to the back end you can enter in a link for Facebook, for Twitter, for Instagram, and for YouTube. So because I don't have an Instagram or YouTube for this league, those buttons aren't displaying. So it's, it's nice. It's a, another area where you can place um, some social media buttons. Um, leagues do, do still like to, to place that in the sidebar. So it's a, a secondary place for those. Okay, so let's close the social links for the footer and open up the sidebar content. This is what I was just pointing to here with the social media buttons. Um, leagues not only like to use this for social media buttons, but for joining, having um, visitors join their mailing list or uh, providing some important information um, to voters. Being that when you go through any page on the website, the sidebar still displays. Let's jump back to the home page. Okay, so jumping back to the back end, um, one, one, uh, one great thing that we offer to um, Milo users is the media library. Um, so both of these images are logos that I pulled from the media library um, where webmasters have already uploaded an existing image. So let's pretend that I am going to link our YouTube account. So I want to pull in a YouTube logo. So this is the media browser um, icon. Let's pull that up and um, go over that a bit. It allows you to, by default, it opens up the upload a new file um, tab and it allows you to upload a file from your own computer. You can also copy an image's address that lives on the web uh, and paste it in here and essentially upload it to the media library um, in that way rather than uh, pulling that file from your computer. You can also look at your leagues files. So for, for myself, it would be all of the files that belong to the sample basic site league. My files, those are my own user files. And then you get to search all of the files that exist in the Milo media library. So because there are quite a few leagues already and some usually the first step uh, for a league setting up their website is to set up those um, social media buttons. For the most part, there's a good chance that there's going to be a good number of YouTube logos available. And that goes for any social media platform, um, even Vote411, being that us leagues use that quite a bit. So I got lucky. I have some options here. I'm going to just submit the first one. Um, here you get an option to um, make some edits to the um, information that would display for your YouTube logo that you're now pulling in or that I'm now pulling in. Um, this alt text will show up if the image does not load properly or for screen readers. Um, and that's that's pretty good. This uh, drop down allows you to manage the size of the logo. Um, this is not the only place where you can manage the size, um, but you can bring it in to um, either be um, half of its size, quarter, something like that. 
you can add a title text that would appear when you hover over the um, image. I'm going to leave that blank because I'd like uh, users just to click on it. So let's submit. So this is rather large. Um, like I said, I could have resized it in the first um, in that uh, first screen or that second secondary screen that came up, but I have a chance to do that here. So with this image highlighted, I can resize it just with my cursor. Um, one trick here, if you're ever working with a tiny uh, window, set it to full HTML, and then you can set it back to WYSIWYG and it will uh, extend your window out of it. Okay, so I've made it to the size I'd like it to be. I'm going to remove that extra space and I don't have a, whoops, I accidentally deleted that, we'll undo. I don't have a link to um, plug on there, but let me just copy the generic YouTube URL so that I can plug that in. I'm sorry, let me um, slow down a bit. So I have that highlighted, the YouTube logo is highlighted. I clicked this link, insert edit link um, icon, and in the link URL field, I am pasting in the link that I'd like to connect to that logo. Here you can set the target if you wanted it to open in the same tab, same window um, that your visitor is on visiting your website, you can. By default, the system, because this is not an internal uh, link to the Milo websites, it's going to, by default, open in a new window. Um, so you could leave that blank or not set if that's what you wanted to do. And I click Insert. And you know that, an, uh, that a link is active when both of these um, icons are highlighted in that way. So all three of these images, all three of these logos have a link connected. Okay, so that is the sidebar content. Again, with sidebar content, you have the additional text boxes that are available to you, either for third-party embed code or an additional formatted text box. We'll go ahead and collapse that one again. Now here is uh, the subscriptions. Um, with subscriptions, your league can subscribe to any league currently on Milo. Um, so that means you could subscribe to any local league in your area that's using us. Um, if your state league is, is on with us, you can um, receive any one of those leagues, action alerts, articles, events, and positions. Um, the National League does also manage uh, many Milo sites, so they are currently managing their action alerts and positions. So those um, subscriptions, at least for the National League, would come uh, by default on set up on, on your Milo site. And let me show you what that actually looks like. So let's jump to the front end of the sample basic site and I'll take you to the action alerts because we are, the sample basic site is subscribed to all of California's alerts. So we can see here that the sample basic site does not have any action alerts of their own, but because they're subscribed to California, they get to enjoy this free content and they didn't have to do any work. So it's really nice when, um, if, if your league is, is going through a dry spell or, or is not as active um, and maybe another local league in your area is, or your state league is, um, they make you look good. Okay, and, there, and there's no limit. Um, you don't have to be subscribed and there's no limit as to how many you can subscribe to. Um, so those are the four content types that are subscribable. Okay, advanced settings. Um, we have a, a few things here that you may not use. It may take you some time to um, get into, um, but they're available to you. The, the Google Analytics tracking code here is something um, fairly new that we implemented that allows your league to track your um, 
uh, your performance, your um, search performance. So I'm opening up the documentation once again. I just wanted to um, showcase that we do have documentation right here under best practices for adding the Google Analytics tracking code to your Milo site. Um, and depending on where you are in the process, as far as if you have a Google account, if you have a Google Analytics account, um, we provide the different paths um, to be able to set that up. So that is a, a cool advanced feature that you could start using um, once your site is live. Or essentially you could implement it at any point before going live and then it would start um, tracking once you were live. Um, from there, the group's theme, this is um, where you would make changes to apply the purple and gold Milo theme. Um, the use site-wide theme definition is the same as the red and blue Milo theme. Um, here, the group register field allows you to choose whether or not you want um, your members to solicit their Milo account themselves. Like they can go to, jumping back over to our, um, to our Milo site here. Um, when a user is not logged in, these buttons are replaced with a log in button and a register button. So that new user or that um, member who wants to become a new user would click on register and they would then be shown a list of leagues who have agreed and have agreed to show themselves on the registration page. Um, and from there, once the user submits their request, that request gets sent to your league if you are the one chosen. Um, and that account, that user account is kept as pending until one of your webmasters approves it. Um, from there, the, um, the public uh, accessibility is managed also through the homepage. So if you set your Milo site to private, which is how your Milo site will come to you um, when you do first join, um, with, it, with the homepage set to private, that controls all of the rest of the pages and whatever other type of content there is in your um, Milo site. So for example, let's say you create a donate page. That donate page can remain public because, and, and, and the site would still be unreachable because your homepage here is set to private and that controls the rest of your um, site's um, accessibility. So we have that one set to public so that we can uh, reach this public or reach the sample site. So I'll leave that as is. Um, when it comes to groups audience, uh, we have this set to California because it's a sample site, but for any other league on Milo, um, you do not wanna restrict your audience to any one league. So you leave that as none so that all leagues can um, be an audience to your, or visit your uh, website. From there, there is league type. Um, this is usually set from the get-go and, and not typically something that you need to choose, um, but can, can be changed if, for example, a league went from ILO to local league. Uh, okay, from here, legacy, legacy settings, excuse me. Uh, these are actually things that moved over when we did um, start developing the Milo system. So you can actually ignore this stuff. Um, it, it really was just for um, keeping a record of. Um, so if it, if it is helpful to your league to keep track of these things there, then you totally can. Um, the Milo team, will not be affected um, whether you fill these fields in or you don't, um, and your site won't be affected either. The, that information doesn't display anywhere, okay? So from there, um, now we're down at the bottom. Uh, the publishing options allow you to um, 
take notes of the changes that you just made. You can uh, toggle the moderation state here. And one thing to say about the moderation state when you're working with your home page, um, if you're working in any other type of page or any other type of content, um, you can leave it in draft mode because you're, you're in the progress of, of making changes to that specific page or that specific content. Um, it is a bit different with the home page because the home page controls so many of the um, permissions throughout your Milo site, it's a good rule of thumb to always publish your changes. So because of that, you want to make sure um, that your your changes are um, exactly like you'd like them to be um, because there is no chance of leaving it in draft mode. If you do leave it in draft mode, you can be limiting yourself and your other webmasters as far as being able to reach um, every function that's available to you as a webmaster. So going from there, um, these settings, because this is the home page, um, because it's the home page, also known as the front page, these will not make a difference here. Um, but when I do show you a different type of content, um, you will see the um, the difference in, in in the need for those. I see a question here. I see the view changes button. Does that allow me to view before publishing? Um, this view changes button is um, is also one of those legacy settings that kind of moved along when we came from Lou in, in the first um, instance of developing the Milo system. Um, because, well, why don't we go ahead and click view changes? I'll show you what, what it looks like. Um, it, it shows you the HTML version of the changes. Uh, and this one here, going forward, the rest of this is the back end of the page once again. So this is just a almost like if the page refreshed, this here is the biggest difference in the editing form of the home page. It doesn't give you, um, it probably is not what you were expecting as far as viewing changes, um, but you can see that there were changes to the um to the text to the home page body content just by seeing the differences in the html tags that are there um but it, it's probably not going to look like what you were expecting um okay so let's keep going through the um the settings here, um, again, this menu setting is one uh, that is similar to these buttons. It will come in handy with other types of content. You, um, you don't have to worry about adding a home page menu link when you already have a link to uh, the home page in the menu. The authoring information that stays, meta tags. Um, these come in handy when um, you want to add some terms um, for SEO um, and things like that. So if you have tags that you'd like to um, add in here, you can. This section is a little bit more advanced um, just as far as all of the fields go. So if you ever do have questions about making additions here or working with meta tags, you can reach out to the Milo team um, to answer those questions for you and, and walk through that with you. So with this published, I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. So the biggest changes I made were to the home body text. And so we see that we have the heading three, heading two, and I, I should have swapped those so they could be in descending order. Um, this here, the one that 
you're not able to edit only um, editing your league's title. This one here is known as heading one. So that's why heading two is the highest um, available to you. From there, here is heading four. Um, here is the special uh, font that we added. This is the button style. So, whoops, right justified on encouraging. And then the notice formatting that we added there. And we can see that YouTube now has a link. I'm going to click on that and we see that by default that opens up in a new window. Okay, so that is everything that's manageable through the home page. Um, now let's see everything else that is manageable through your administrator league site menu um, because those are the two places um, that you'll be accessing to make really all of your changes and additions. Um, so here in the administrator league site menu, let's first go over uh, the last links. Um, the bulk of the links are for you to make new creations. Um, a page is just uh, basic as far as, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna open one from here. As far as just displaying um, in your site, uh, you can add it to the menu and it would just display essentially the body of the page and the title. Um, those are the, the bare minimums that you would add. Um, and the page type is probably the content type that you will use most often. Um, next is article. And here you can choose from um, adding an article as news, an announcement, a blog, pro, blog post, excuse me, press release, or a member's story. Um, when it comes to articles, um, those will all fill the articles page. So this is uh, a page view where so far only the subscribed alerts are displaying from California uh, because again, the sample basic site does not yet have any articles of their own. Um, from there we have events and one thing to note about articles, events, action alerts, and positions, um, just like I explained for articles, when you add an article, it gets put onto the article page. The same thing goes for events. When you create an event, it gets put on the calendar page. Uh, when you create a position, it is put here on the positions page. Um, so all four of those are not only the type of content that you can subscribe to from other leagues, but it is um, it is a, a content type that works differently than a page that than a page does. Um, being that, excuse me, the positions page. Being that you cannot edit the positions page or the calendar or articles or action alerts directly you can only edit the pieces of content um, that make up that page. So you can edit each individual action alert, but not the action alert page directly, um, with the exception of the league headers. Oh, and I see, um, I'm gonna take a quick pause before I continue with uh, the other three um, content types that you can add. Um, I see that I had a question earlier of the login, I'm assuming the login bar, um, if it's only for the webmaster. That the login bar will always display here at the top of the website. Um, and it just, uh, it will stay there and, and that's just where it lives, um, a user, can still access your website and, and travel through it if your website is live um, and, and would have no problem 
with navigating it not logged in. Um, and going back to the view changes question, um, when it comes to being able to officially see your changes before uh, you publish, the main um, way would be through um, that view changes button. Although, like I said, although it's, it's not showing and displaying um, the front end of the, um, or the WYSIWYG version of the um, homepage content, that is probably the best way at least to compare your current version against the newer version that you want to implement um, because the only other way to see those changes before you um, publish is to essentially looking to look into it uh, through the editing form um, where we were here um, in the new draft essentially just taking a look here. Um, I know that's not the best way, but other than the view changes button, that, that is um, what you would have uh, to fall back on. The, another thing though to, to, um, to say about that is that we do offer the moderate tab here. Um, this keeps a record of all of the changes from draft to publish, publish to draft. Those types of changes are um, the, that record is kept here. So I can see the different revisions um, and I could actually revert back to the most previous version that we had. Um, let's take a look at what this version is. So this is the version that we came into um, be at the at the start of this webinar at the top of this webinar this is what the sample basic site looked like um, that's another way to um, view your changes you could essentially publish your changes take a look at what it looks like on the front end if you're not okay with that you can just revert back to the most previous revision so I'm gonna um, go back with my browser here and I'm going to revert back to that last version. So this is another way that you can um, test your changes in a way. Essentially, it's not testing them because you are going forward with that publishing, um, but you can take it back if you <laughs> regret regret making those changes. And we just leave a log message um, just for a reason for why we are reverting. Because that will be kept as another revision record and your note will be there. So let's go back to view published and we're back to my most previous version. Okay, so let's jump back to the administer league site menu. Um, so we went over these four types of content that um, behave similarly. Um, the next is a uh, web form. Um, this form is best for um, uh, membership, donations, um, volunteering uh, or volunteer signups, registering um, for any type of event. It, it has a lot of purposes um, and you can make this form as simple or as advanced um, as you need it to be. Uh, like if, if you need it to be a, a survey that is based on the answers that a person is giving you, you can make it that advanced. Um, from there, you can create a slideshow items. Um, right now you're, your slideshow has two separate items uh, living in it. And then last type of uh, content that you can create is a committee. 
Um, this is essentially, it creates a, a committee page, but um, it also creates the committee group within the Milo system um, that you can refer to from other pieces of content. So before we get into um, adding any of these, let's look at what you can manage from the Administrator League site menu. I'm gonna open these each in uh, separate windows. Let's first go over Manage Menu. This pulls up all of the links that are in your menu. Um, this includes even the links that are currently disabled, but that do still exist. Um, and you can enable them at any time, disable them at any time. Um, you can rearrange them. Um, pulling them to the left creates them to be a main menu item. Pulling them to the right is a sub-menu item, and you can rearrange these. Um, any changes that you make as far as the grabby handles go and as far as enabling and disabling, um, before you leave this page, be sure to scroll all the way to the bottom and save configuration. So I just disabled that page. Let's jump back to the front and click about. And then we see that visions, beliefs, and intentions is gone from the menu. Oh, and one thing to note about the Minister League site menu, um, it is only reachable uh, from a handful of pages. The first being the home page, and then the other uh, pages are these last five, action alerts, articles, calendar, positions, and members only. Uh, we haven't talked about this one too much yet. Um, this is all of the private content that you upload um, is, is placed here under members only content. And this is a, a page that's only reachable to those who are logged in. If I was not logged in, this menu item would not show at all. So um, we see that the Administer League site menu popped back up. Okay. So from Manage Menu, we have Manage Content. Manage Content gives you your full list of all of the pages, the slideshow items, if there were events, if there were articles, all the different content that exists in your site. Um, you can narrow it down to slideshow items, um, and make major changes, well, not major changes, but you can make ma you can make changes to multiple content pieces. You can um, choose from any one of these um, types here. What I'm gonna do is uh, show to you what um, the promote to front page looks like. So I'm going to promote about and voting because that was something that um, we didn't get to get into from the home page. So from here, I'm going to jump back to our home page, the sample basic site. And under our home page main body content, we now have those promoted pages and they just kind of fill in the home page as a feed. So if, if you ever have any trouble finding content, go to manage content and you will see it there. I see another question. Can I see a committee? I'm curious about that. It seems unique. Let's go ahead and um, open that up. Um, let me just quickly go over uh, manage files and manage members and we'll jump right into um, adding a committee. So um, just as Managed Content allows you to uh, see all of the content that is within your site, Managed Files is essentially um, does the same thing. You get to see all of your uploaded files. So, so far I have, um, I have uploaded all of these pictures and, um, you know, PDFs so far. Scrolling back up. Um, I can do the same thing as I did in Manage Content and um, essentially uh, 
shrink down my list, um, hit apply, shrink it down essentially with any one of these drop downs or by typing in a name or description, um, hitting apply and then selecting the ones I want to make changes to and choosing from the operations. I can uh, make a change to multiple files at once. You can also view all files. Um, and I'm, oops, I have a, an old um, search term there that it that the system had saved. But once I remove that and hit apply, it's going to show me all of the files in the Milo system. I can also add a new file from here. So just like we saw from um, the sidebar content, um, you can upload a new picture from your um, computer or from the web. So let's close that. And the last one here is manage members. So because you can uh, have users on your um, Milo site, you can, you're, um, also able to manage them. Um, that allows you to make changes to any of their uh, roles. Um, members come by default as just a, a typical user member, um, but you can grant administrator member access, and that's essentially um, giving somebody the webmaster privileges. Um, and again, from here, you can uh, modify multiple records as at once. Okay, so that is all that is available to you through the Administrator League site menu. So that is uh, the second place where you make um, most of your changes, that and your homepage. So this is the Create a Committee page. This is what um, it looks like when you click Add Committee. So first we'll add a title and I will create a, a sample committee so that we can see what it looks like. Being that I don't think we'll have too much time to get into um, creating other types of content. Um, I am going to steal some text here just so that I have something to work with. Okay, so let's format this a bit. To play around with it. Um, okay, when it comes to edit summary, this um, this section will display if you promote that page to the front page. So with this about page, this is our mission statement. And that is actually the summary on the page. Um, so just like the mission statement is set to the summary of the about page, we're going to set the mission statement to the summary of this committee page with the exception of it, um, or with the addition of Glendale Burbank. I'm going to take a, a quick pause here with committee and jump back over to manage members. Um, the CSV button does allow you to download a, a copy of the list of members um, and it would have all of these same fields here as uh, columns. Um, and yeah, uh, from there, our, our Milo team can also um, conduct a bulk upload to get your members into the Milo system if you provide us with a CSV. Um, and there's notes about that in our documentation uh, when it comes to um, using that template. Um, we provide a template for you in that documentation and then um, you can reach out to us if you have any questions about that. Okay, so back to the creation of the sample committee. Um, We do um, have the summary added and we have um, something in the body already. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to sample basic site. Uh, 
Okay. So we see some similarities with um, what we already went through with the homepage here um, under the body content or the body text box. We have those additional uh, text boxes either for third party embed code or additional formatted text. I'm going to leave those alone. Um, committee contact information. This is nice to have if, um, if you have a meeting space that your committee typically meets at, you can put in the location information. Um, but because I won't, uh, I won't add anything there, I'll at least add a phone number um, just so that we can see what that looks like. Okay, from here, um, you can relate content. Um, let's say that you have events that are related to this committee. You can choose them from this list here, and then a link will display on the front end to that content. The only thing to be careful with here is um, that this is a system-wide list. So we see here, join LWV of the San Bernardino area. Um, these, this list consists of all pages and content um, that belongs to any leg on Milo. So it may, it may be best to rename your content piece if you want to relate to it here. Um, but let's just add one to, to, to uh, show you what that looks like. You can also add issues. We have um, these, this list of issues comes from not only our, some of our California issues, but um, many of them are coming from the National League. And I believe this is from their newest impact on issues, the 2018, um, 2020 version. So, and also if you have any, suggestions for additions, you can always reach out to the Milo team. But let's add one there. Well, let's add a couple. Okay. Um, the same thing here goes for positions. This is a, um, similar to the related content, this is a system-wide uh, list, but it, this one is a bit different because it does display the league name um, here as the third piece of data. So it's a little bit easier um, to pull from these, but still it's something to be careful with when you're going through that list. Um, we are going to leave this page private because as I said uh, previously, if, um, if we had our home page set to private, uh, this page, this committee page would remain private as well, even though the page itself is set to public. And that is because the home page controls the overall settings, privacy settings for your entire site. League to which content belongs. This is something that you yourself won't have to worry to because you will belong to only um, one site, one Milo site as a webmaster. But because I belong to three different sites, I have to be careful as to which league I choose. Um, but that's not something you have to worry about. Because we have a summary in there, I'm gonna promote this to the front page. Um, I'm also going to make it sticky at the top of lists. Um, what, what sticky will make it do, um, jumping back to the front end, it's going to make the committee page supersede both of these and display that committee summary right here, above about. Um, and that just gives the content piece priority. I'm going to leave this in draft mode because it is not the home page, and um, we can afford to do so and save and take a look at what we've created so far. Okay, so not until we publish our changes will we see the um, the title of the page, but we do see the home page body or the um, body content, the body text we see the issues that um, we related to. And some of these issues will have a bit of an explanation. Um, there are some that do and some that don't. 
the positions that I have um, related to as well, and that becomes, well, all of these become a link. Um, the issues links are uh, just links back to the, the bigger issue and will on that bigger issue page does provide the, the links to other related content. And going back, um, clicking on this California Water Resources Position link will open up to California's Milo page to that specific position. The contact information um, will display here. If I had the name, uh, the contact name, it would display right above, um, and that address as well would display it in this box. We do have related content that displays there and provides a link to that. Open that in a new window. And so because I was not able to tell whose league it belonged to, um, that that is uh, the reason for being extra careful with the related content list. So that's what um, it looks like as far as making uh, new content. Um, Let's go back into this draft uh, because I want to show you how you can add a new uh, content piece to your menu. So now that we've we saved a draft version of this, we now have a URL. This draft, this page exists in our Milo system. So we're going to go back in to edit it. Um, when you go back in to edit a draft, if if you have a newly saved draft, you're going to see that there is one new setting available to you. So now that I'm in the uh, back end of edit com editing the sample committee, I'm going to scroll all the way back down to the bottom, uh, back down to publishing options. Now I see that menu settings is available to me. Menu settings wasn't there before because I didn't have that content piece saved yet. Although I was adding content to the page, the system did not have the URL to recognize that committee by. But now that I saved that draft and the system recognizes that committee, it's allowing me to add it to the menu. So if I click provide a menu link, I can toggle the menu link title. Let's just change it up so that you can see um, what that looks like. We'll add a description, which works very similarly to the um, title text with a file or an image. This description text will uh, show when hovering over that. You can also choose if it's going to be a main menu item, you will leave sample basic site as the parent. Or if you want it to be a submenu item, it can uh, live under any one of these. So just for now, let's just pretend that that is going to be a child link to the issues page. Let's go back over here. I could go ahead and publish my changes from here, but let's take a look at my draft again. Although I didn't make any changes to my draft, I just want to um, show you another way that you can publish your changes. So I could have published it from that editing form, but I wanted to double check that everything looks good. Let's say that I am totally happy with this committee. I can just publish it from here. So I'm gonna hit apply. Now we see the menu settings come into play because we've published our changes and that menu setting uh, change was made in the very last instance. So let's say that I don't like that position there. Let's jump back to the home page because from the Administer League site menu, you can go to Manage Menu or another way to reach that same page is to click on the cog in your menu in the right-hand corner and click list links. 
So list links and manage menu will take you to the same page. So let's jump to list links so you can see um, this is that same page that we were just at uh, not too long ago. I'm going to re-enable the vision, beliefs, and intentions. And I'm going to pull that one out, the Milo Committee page, um, so that it's a main menu item. I'm going to save my changes. And I see that the Milo Committee is now on its own um, in the menu. I'm going to jump over to our questions. I see a question about URL, um, and I'm assuming that's with the, the Milo URL. Um, the, if, you, if your link does have a current uh, domain or a current URL that you're using that's um, you know, a short and sweet one, you can connect that and have it point to your Milo site. Um, that is a, a little bit of a, um, it's not too complicated of a process, but it does involve um, taking a few steps with your domain name provider. And that is help that we, the Milo team can offer. And that's something we can get into um, when that time comes to, because that process is uh, reserved for when your Milo site is uh, in the process of going live. So I have a question here about the committees. Um, can they be used in the members only for those who want to join a committee? Um, if you are trying to solicit committee membership, the best uh, content type would be a form. Let's uh, create a quick form just to um, show you how you can play around with the uh, form components. So I jump back over to the home page, open the administer league site menu, and I'm going to add a form. Because we've gone over um, kind of the, the editing forms with at least committee and the home page, um, I'm going to move a little faster through the uh, forms um, editing form just so that we can uh, get through this a little faster. So. I'm going to add just the minimums here, the um, title and, whoops, <laughs> steal some text here again, and a uh, description. I want that to be a paragraph. Actually, let's make that special and separate that. Okay, just to make a little, uh, give it a little formatting there. Okay, so, Let's also add in content below the form. Um, I want you to be able to see the differences here. And let's make this a notice. Okay, so the, the minimums that I'm adding right now are the title, the description, which is the same as the body text, and content below form. This is a, a new section that is only available to uh, forms or web forms. Okay. And we can relate this form to uh, that new committee that we just created. So this would probably be the, the most straightforward way for, for your league to do this um, about joining a committee so that um, not only will the person be able to sign up, but then they could click through to that related committee and read more about it. Okay, so let's save this as a draft for now. Okay, so remember we have this notice box showing up under the web form. I don't yet have any web form components, so that's the reason why this is all scrunched together. To be able to edit the web form itself, um, while on the sample form uh, page, click on web form. That opens the form components. Uh, you don't have to click the form components again because that is the same uh, tab. So let's add the, um, the most common type is text field. Let's add 
have somebody add their name. You can have it be required or not. Let's add that in. The label is what displays for the user. The form key is what the system um, wants to use as a, as a recognizable element for that form component. You can add a description. You can require that the name always, or the value for the name always be unique. You can uh, restrict the maximum or minimum length. You can specify a placeholder. For the most part, um, all of these settings that are available with each type of um, form component, we have a pretty good explanation of each. So they're pretty straightforward as to what um, each one would be. Um, let's go ahead and save that form component. Um, just like the menu, you're able to rearrange these as well. I only have one, so I'm not going to save those changes there. But so far, we have one, um, one form component. Um, by default, the forms are always set up to have a progress bar. Let's jump back to web form. Um, so form components is where you will add or delete any of the questions that you want to have on that form. Um, and then from there, you're also able to connect email addresses um, to the form. So if, if you want the submitted form to go to um, your committee contact, you can add that email address in. Um, once you click add, you can also um, specify the subject and uh, the email from address. You can have as many or as few emails as you want. Um, from there, form settings um, is, is another huge component as far as, uh, uh, as opposed to the form components. Form components and form settings are the two major chunks to um, control your or manage your web form. Here you can enter in a confirmation message. Um, if there's nothing added here, the uh, default is to be, um, I think it's go back to the form and it's just a link to go back. Um, but the other, uh, the other thing I was um, referring to here is the progress bar settings. And you can shut that down and save your configuration. So let's jump back and we've made that change, that is gone now. Um, so that's that's where I recommend uh, for committee signups. I'm gonna go ahead and pause there as far as the uh, demo goes and, and um, jump into the other questions that I wasn't able to answer. Um, so I'm gonna go from the latest back to the older ones. I understand how to make a form. I was just hoping there was a section where committee members can meet up and get info online. Um, if, if you're looking for um, maybe a page where the committee will keep up-to-date information, possibly, um, I would recommend the committee page. Um, it does all depend, though, if um, if your committee members are willing to be webmasters, um, because there is no way to limit a webmaster's access to only certain a certain portion of your website, um, they would have all access to the league's website or none as far as a webmaster. Um, we do not have a payment processing system within Milo. Um, 
so there aren't uh, shopping carts available. Many leagues will use PayPal um, for their payment processing system, and that embeds uh, very well with uh, any website. Okay, next question I see. I saw both join and donate. Are they just labels or is there different functionality associated? Um, and I'm assuming this is with the pages join and donate. Um, or no, I'm sorry. This probably has to do with the forms. Um, I'm assuming when I was hovering here, um, but when it comes to the join and, and donate, either the pages or the forms, um, the difference in functionality will be up to you. Um, it depends on how you are setting up uh, those pages. And especially it is, it's dependent on um, how you will be taking those types of payments. If they're going to be check payments, um, then, you know, we, we recommend that uh, the, the leagues on Milo create a web form um, where you set up that web form to email the donor um, or that new member, that joining member. Um, and in the instructions, we would include, uh, you know, this, this copy of the form will be emailed to you. Please print that and mail it with uh, your check to um, your league's address. Um, other than that, um, you, you really could have a, a join or donate form or page, um, be all in one. Um, I have had a, a league that has done that before, um, essentially just having one contribution form. Um, and then the first question was, are you making a donation or are you make, or are you, um, joining as a member um, and because you can set up a, a form to be um, set up with conditions that's how that's how we set that that contribution form up so that that first answer um, would determine what the next questions would be for that um, either member or donor and and um, Anna let me know if that does not cover uh, what you were originally asking um, and your original question was, I saw both join and donate. Are they just labels or is there different functionality associated? Okay, next question. Next question. Can we use their pages or does it link to their page so we have to make our own? Um, Okay, thank you, Joanne. <laughs> I see that you are filling in um, what you were referring to. Thank you. I was trying to rack my brain a bit to to remember what I was talking about um, at that point, but I'd appreciate it. While you're um, getting that to me, I'm going to go over the email address question that you also had. Um, Milo does not have um, the forwarding emails as Lou did, um, but we do have recommendations as far as how you can move forward with um, still using and, and still maintaining use of these forwarding emails. Um, for the most part, most leagues are um, able to you continue using their forwarding email addresses through their domain name provider. Um, I'm not sure who your name domain name provider is, but um, most of those providers are good about um, giving forwarding email address service to their uh, subscribers for free. Um, that's something worth looking into. Yeah, um, so I would say first your domain name provider would be the first to check in with as far as email addresses go. Um, and then from there, 
some of our webmasters have um, made good use of G Suite. Um, they not only have a nonprofit rate, but our webmasters have been um, pretty ingenious in in being able to use the groups um, function in in G Suite, um, and that allows them to use more email addresses without having to pay for each handle, um, if that makes sense. But if you do have questions about emails, um, reach out to the Milo team because then we can give you um, some of those notes on, on that. Okay, so um, going back to the question about the donate or um, join uh, pages. Okay, so um, so it looks like you saw a, a donate form and thought that you could use their form on your page. Um, the Milo team can actually clone existing content to your league site. So, for example, let's say that <laughs> I know I know that our Milo committee page is not that beautiful, but let's say that your league wanted this um, as a webmaster you can clone a committee. Um, essentially, there are, I think, at least two different um, content types that a webmaster can clone. It's the committees and the events. There might be ones um, on top of that, but those are the two that are coming to mind now. Um, when it comes to the Milo team, we can clone all other types of content from there. So let's say that uh, a league has a, has a pretty nifty um, donation form. Let's see what Glendale Burbank is using. Oh, they're using PayPal. Well, let's see if they have a form here. Okay, they do not. Um, but let's say that this was a Milo web form. The option to clone this web form would be up there um, for the Milo team. And we could essentially clone this exact form, add it to your um, your league site. I'm going to jump back to the sample basic site homepage. And once we would confirm to you that that was cloned, you would jump into your administer league site menu and go to manage content. And you would see that that um, new piece of content would be at the top of your list and under published, it would actually say no, um, because we would leave it in a draft mode, knowing that you still have to make changes from the league that it was coming from to, to match your own league. I hope that that answers um, your question there. Um, feel free to add some notes to the questions. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so let's, um, I'm gonna make my way back up to the other questions, okay. All righty. Um, okay, so we, we talked about the um, pointing of the URL, uh, pointing the domain. So, can users subscribe to specific feeds? Um, yes, let's jump into one of those. Um, let me go back to the home page so that I can uh, jump to any one of these um, content types. So the same content types that are subscribable from one Milo League to another, um, you can also subscribe to them as a non-Milo user. So let's let's start first with the action alerts. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of this page. Oh, whoops. I'm sorry. It is not at the bottom. It is this button here. All sample. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I um I'm looking for this tiny button here. Um You'll see that in the 
hover over title text, uh, it says subscribe to action alerts. Um, when we click on this, some ugly text pops up, but essentially this is the RSS feed. This is the code that you would provide to that person who wants to subscribe to your action alerts. Um, and they would, that person would plug this code into, um, you know, if it's a browser extension or an application, or they have something on their website that um, that takes RSS feeds and, and, and shows a feed of your league's action alerts on their website. Um, so anything like that, that would take and convert that RSS feed code to display the content. Um, because this league doesn't have any action alerts, this RSS feed code is very short. But let's, uh, whoops, let's jump over to Glendale Burbank and see if they have any action alerts that we could see. Okay, they are the same. So those, um, that RSS feed will keep that uh, subscribed user or that um, non-Milo user um, subscribed and up to date with the current uh, content that comes through. Do we have any other questions? Definitely, please do um, shoot us an email, give us a call if you can think of any questions afterwards, um, do not hesitate. And um, I, I don't know if you, you both feel this would be beneficial to you, but if you want to join the Milo support group as of now, I can, um, I can directly add you if, if you want to be able to ask some webmasters some questions as of now, you can. Um, all I would need from you is a Gmail address. Okay, I'll go ahead and add you now, Joanne. Thank you for that. I'm going to leave your emails as is or as all emails. You can uh, manage this once you do log into the Google group. Awesome. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you were confirming that you are not a robot either, Joanne. <laughs> um, all right. I, I thank you. Thank you for joining me today. This was, um, I hope, as productive for you both as um, I felt it was for for me. Um, again, like I said earlier, if you have any questions that do come up after this webinar, please do not hesitate to um, reach out to us either via email at milo at lwvc.org that's m-y-l-o at lwvc.org or you can um, give us a call to our office um, i am putting that number in the chat it is 916-442-7215 um, and uh, we're we're here to to help you out and answer any questions that that you may have okay yeah, thank you, thank you both very much. This was um, this was better than I was expecting. So yeah, I I hope to talk with you ladies soon. And um, with that, we'll go ahead and shut down the webinar. Thank you again. Alrighty. Bye bye.